hope you all enjoyed your lunch and are ready for our next session. Um, quite like very interesting. And um, so I'm gonna be sharing and I'm gonna keep on time. I'm gonna be a good, a good chair. <laughs> um, so please. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is session six, mapping, crime mapping and kidnapping. And we're going to start with um, a paper by Georgina Jimenez and Carolina Torreblanca from Data Civica, entitled, Is there a kidnapping epidemic in Mexico's subway? So please. Thank you. Hi. Well, hi. Thank you, everyone, for being here after <laughs> all this time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to present this thing we did, uh, Carolina and me. Carolina is my boss, but she couldn't make it today. Uh, it's actually not an academic paper, so I, I thought I'd start by explaining a bit about what Data Civica is, uh, just a bit of self-promotion. <laughs> so uh, Data Civica, we are an NGO, an NGO uh, and our slogan, which I'm, I'm not using it for promotion purposes only, but because I really think it explains what we do. Uh, we developed, we do like, our, our slogan is more data for more people. So what we do is we develop tools sometimes and we help uh, other civil society organizations uh, use data in a, in a good way or technology or anything they need. Uh, we, for example, developed an algorithm to predict the possibility of a municipality in Mexico to have a mass grave, for example. No, that kind of thing, that's what we do. Things that we think are useful for society, but sometimes we do not have the tools to, for doing them. Uh, we produce data journalism. Actually, the, the thing I'm going to present today, it's, it's one of our blogs that we have a blog in Animal Politico and one in Revista Nexos, which are national media in Mexico. And uh, we also train people. We, we, we believe that programming and data analytics, it's something uh, especially like uh, journalists and civil society organizations should be uh, able to use. So we train those people especially in these topics. So... Uh, since this is a, it's not an academic paper as I was telling you, it's a blog and it's, it was like written in a pretty specific context. I think it's, it's worth to explain what happened in Mexico City. Uh, at the beginning of, uh, the, at the end of 2018 and at the beginning of 2019, uh, we started hearing in Mexico about this new modus operandi, this new, uh, new, mo new, new modus operandi of kidnapping. Kidnapping modus operandi. <laughs> about, uh, uh, like the announcement started uh, appearing in in social media. It's not like um, anything else. We would you, you would you would just read it in Facebook or Twitter or whatever. But we call this modus operandi "Calm Down, Honey" or "Calmate, Mi Amor" in Spanish, in Spanish. <laughs> because what these perpetrators perpetrators were doing is that they would come across like they would come to you. They would pull my arm, for example, and they would pretend they are my my boyfriend or he's like the perpetrator would, would pretend he's my boyfriend or my husband. And he'd be like, calm down, Gina, don't make a scene. Let's go. But not Gina, because he, he wouldn't know my name. <laughs> but he'd be like, no, 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 don't make a scene. No. And I'd be like yelling and everything. And and if people would come across, he'd be like, no, 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 uh, she's just making a scene. She's just being dramatic. Leave, leave us alone. Right. Uh, this is one of the testimonies, actually. It's on January 28th, around 3 p.m. I was leaving the subway station. Uh, this was happening. When we first started hearing about this, it was happening like in all Mexico City, in the mall, etc. But then it was happening in the vicinity of Mexico City subway. Uh, I was leaving the subway station in Pulsara. I was crossing one of the bridges in the subway when a man pulled my arm and said, Stop, Daniela, don't make a scene. Let's go. Uh, I told him I didn't know him and asked him to leave me alone, but he kept pulling me. Finally, as I asked another passenger for help, for help, he and a street vendor fortunately helped me keep the perpetrator away. Uh, this is actually a nice testimony because she, she got help really easily, <laughs> but you would read some that were pretty bad because sometimes girls would be like in the mall and the, like I read one about a, a, a woman being in, uh, in the mall and the police officer came and the guy is like well, well dressed with a suit and everything, you know? And he's like, no, 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 she's just exaggerating. And, and the police officer is like, okay, he left. <laughs> so uh, this, of course, like uh, alerted many feminist organizations and everything because it's like a modus operandi based on misogyny <laughs> and in the idea that women are historical and crazy and being dramatic and making sense. So uh, then this organization called Serendipia Digital collected around 200 testimonies from December 18, 2018 to February, uh, 
200 testimonies of women saying this had happened to them, right? And it really became like a mass hysteria. <laughs> uh, I use the, the, the Mexico City subway pretty often. Uh, if I'm going to a secure area, for example, like as secure as in Mexico can be, <laughs> but if I'm going to a secure area, I usually like use the subway and, and I actually stopped using it for, it for like a couple days. Uh, and like there was like this hysteria. <laughs> so we decided to write something about this and trying to find out if it was as bad as we, we thought it was. So uh, for doing this, we thought there was like, there were like two main questions. The first one was, are women being kidnapped in the vicinities of Mexico City subway first? Like, is this happening disproportionately in the vicinities of Mexico City subway or is it happening everywhere? And the second was, are women being kidnapped in Mexico City more often than in the rest of the country? Because you know how much is too much, right? Like one person being kidnapped might be too much, but we really needed to know if this was as bad so I could to justify me to st uh, stop using the, me the Mexico City subway, right? So uh, now in, Mex in Mexico City, we didn't used to have like geolocated denounces of crimes. We just have them now. Uh, it's marvelous. <laughs> For us, it's amazing. Uh, and so what we did, oh uh, well, and the denounces we have, we have like three types of kid of the three things that would could be considered kidnapping in those data in that data. Uh, first, it's kidnapping. It's when someone deprives another person from their liberty, but asks for a remorse. The other one is willful deprivation of liberty. Uh, that's how it's stated in the Mexico City Penal Code. Uh, that's when someone deprives another person from their liberty, but do not ask for remorse. Uh, I was asking, I was talking to my sister in the morning and she was actually, my, my sister's a lawyer, <laughs> and she was telling me uh, that the deprivation of liberty is actually the version 3.0 of rapture, which was like a, cri a crime that, that for when a man would, would stole a girl to marry her actually. <laughs> so, and then a child abduction, that's when someone prevents an, one of the parents of exercising parental custody, so. We have these three types of, of crimes, at least in these announcers, so just wanted to explain that. And so what we did first to, to find out if women were being kidnapped in the vicinities of Mexico City subway was to, we like draw this radio around each uh, station of the Mexico City subway. A, a, a radio of 100 meters, one of 200 meters, and one of 500 meters, okay? Uh, and we wanted to see how many uh, kidnappings were occurring in those in those radios. Okay. Uh, this was first. I mean, we at the beginning we were like, okay, let's just do that and find out how many kidnappings are occurring there. There, but then of course, crime does not distribute homogeneously in Mexico City, right? Because there are some places where you have more people and of course more crimes. Therefore, no. Uh, so what we did at the end was we. Uh, geolocated the 10 more uh, common crimes in Mexico City. Uh, oh, you cannot see right. <laughs> well, it's burglary to a passenger, kidnapping, willful deprivation of liberty, uh, child abduction, I think that one's fraud, uh, burglary to a, uh, then it's, so it's auto theft, threats, Auto theft threats, a theft of objects, animals, documents, etc. Then burglary to a deliverer and domestic violence. So what we can see, like <laughs> what we can barely see, is that <laughs> like 20% of around like 20% of all these crimes happen in the in 500 meters around, uh, in the radio in in a 500 meters radio around any subway station, okay? This is because the, the pink the pink one, the dark pink one, that's 500 meters. The next one is 200 meters, and the next one is 100 meters, okay? So like around 20%, it's, it seems to be like normal that 20% of, of felonies occur like in the, in the 500 meters radio. But as you can see, the, me, the kidnapping of men, it's 60%, 65% occur in, a, in the 500 meter radio, right? Yes? Uh, ah, yes, women are women use a bit more the subway than men do. Uh, then, uh, so 
like as you can see, apparently men are more much more like kidnapped around Mexico City subways. And but the, when you see like women, when you see the the, the percentages of felonies that occur a hundred meters away from the from the from the subway station, which are like the light color, we the willful deprivation of liberty for women it's 16 percent, which is much higher than any other felony. Okay. And we have another ones like burglary to a passenger that of course occurs more in, in, in the vicinity of Mexico City. So wait, but that makes sense. But the thing with this is that we didn't have as many denounces. We know it's, there's like underreporting, so we didn't have, we had like 100 denounces, I think. And then, here you can see, that is like, the, that's the subway, subway network. And all the blue, the blue bullets, <laughs> the blue balls, are like the, ra the 500 meters radio. So uh, we, we figured out like kidnapping reports are much more concentrated, concentrated uh, for, for example, and then willful deprivation of liberty. This is men and women though, it's not divided. Child abduction, as you can see, it's all widespread. And bulgari, that which happens more and more often, uh, it's also widespread. Um, so apparently, willful deprivation of liberty against women it does occur more uh, occurs more in the vicinity of Mexico City subway. Nonetheless, mer mer men are also disproportionately kidnapped in the vicinity of Mexico City subway. Uh, it's not just women, <laughs> and they're not. But they're, it's still there are not enough observations to be certain about this. Like we didn't. We we are pretty aware that we didn't have as much as we'd like to. Uh, so well, that was like the first question we had, right? The second question was, are women being kidnapped in Mexico City more often than in the rest of Mexico? Uh, for this, what we used, uh, if you want to know like, about crime in Mexico, there are usually like, two main sources. One is the National Security Secretariat, and they have like, the number of investigations. So we, we, we always like to be really, uh, really clear about this. These are like the amount of investigations we have in each, each place, but of course on the reporting, and we don't, we're not sure if these are uh, this doesn't represent the amount of kidnappings. Uh, and the National Victimization Survey, which really help us to estimate the underreporting, right? Uh, okay. So, <laughs> this is the monthly, monthly rate of kidnapping investigations. In, so, the, the green one is the rest of the country, and the pink one is Mexico City. So, as you can see, uh, Mexico City has like traditionally been under the the rate for the rest of Mexico, uh, but in January 2019 it did spike a bit, uh, well, or not not a bit. The thing is, <laughs> there's also something terrible happening here, <laughs> because the new administration in Mexico City, uh, when it came in December last year, they state they said in in January they the new prosecutors uh, released a statement saying that the previous prosecutor was hiding numbers and was changing the 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 numbers we had so mm -hmm. it was awful <laughs> so yeah and they do not have i mean what these people were doing apparently is that they, they sometimes somebody would die, die of a intentional homicide and they would classify it as natural death <laughs> or something like that so we do seem to, there seems to be a spike, but it, it might also have to do with the new administration using, not, not changing the, the numbers now. So that's the thing with there. But, and also, what also is happening here is that uh, women kidnapping and men kidnapping are both spiking too. It's not only men, it's not only women. Hmm? Yeah. <sighs> so, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, just saying if something, if I forget something. Okay, and then we have this yearly, the really rate of kidnapping investigations, which you cannot see, <laughs> but the colors reflect how bad it is. So Tamaulipas over here, they had like a 14 rate in 2015. Uh, and Mexico City, oh, you cannot see, it's so sad. Uh, Mexico City is like the seventh one, and it's like half of which Tamaulipas is. 
So it's not nearly as bad as other places in Mexico. For, uh -huh. yep. And then, uh, of course, men, men are kidnapped more than women, but that's something. And there's an, and this one is the National Victimization Survey. So these are not investigations, but uh, the percentage of people who, when you ask them if they had been kidnapped, they said they were. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, well, uh, the, in the rate for men in Mexico City like it spiked in 2007, in 17, but women, and women was just as the rest of the country. And it, it's, it's still 2017 because it, this is a survey, so it comes with badly. <laughs> Uh, and then this is uh, that. Uh, this, those are questions from also the National Victimization Survey. When we ask people if have you stopped using public transport due to the fear that a crime might, might occur, and considering the places you visit and the activities you usually do, do you think extortion or, or kidnapping might occur to you? And as you can see, uh, women, o sea, like m men and, w and women, uh, report stopped using public transport more in Mexico City than in the rest of the country. But men are women reported alike, right? There is no difference there. This is like affirmative. This is the people who responded affirmative to these questions. Uh, and uh, the same, the, almost the same happens here, right? There's barely any difference between any difference between men and women, and in both questions. Okay. So, <laughs> is there a kidnapping epidemic in Mexico City it's a way? Uh, we, we think that there is not enough, uh, enough uh, evidence to state that there is a women's epidemic in Mexico, a women's kidnapping epidemic in Mexico City it's a way. Uh, nonetheless, we do believe that uh, some, we, we, we acknowledge that it's, it seems like m the willful deprivation of women happens more often in the vicinity of Mexico City subway, and the kidnapping of men does too. Uh, but the kidnapping rate for both for, for Mexico City for both men and women has remained under the, the, the rest of the country, and um, yeah, we do to the fact that and that yeah that's it. <laughs> thank you, Her <coughs> thank you, Georgina, for such an uh, interesting um, presentation. I. I remember well how this whole idea of the kidnapping um, in the subway area was sort of a huge news in Mexico. Um, so I'm going to put the next presentation, but if anyone has thought, uh, one burning question. And that was me, so you wait. You got to seize the opportunity when you, when you have. The, the um, uh, one question I have is um, the you're measuring distance from the subway uh, where these incidents happen, but how do we measure on the subway? Does do your data account for movement? It's, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, like inside the, inside the station, you mean? Not, uh, on the train, uh, uh, on the subway. No, the, the, yeah, we, we do think that information must have it like the Mexico City subway office, but they don't publish it, I think. Well, we, we've looked for it and we haven't found it. So we don't, no, there's no, f I mean, yeah, no. But th these are like, we have like the locations of the stations and then we draw this, this radius, you know? So I think that, and we use the analysis that are geolocated. So it, m it would make sense that if you report, yes, and you report and you denounce a crime, then it, sh it should appear there, you know? But yeah. Thank you.